and welcome to the show. We are here at the Endurodrome, driving three more vehicles till destruction, starting with a Ford Falcon. This is the XB that is going to take on our course. I'll be honest, the big muscle cars, while sometimes the slightly softer, slightly more wobbly of suspensions is a good thing. Uh, they have tended so far not to actually do massively well, but you know, I always hope for <laughs> for the best. Those are some nasty crunches on the car. We've lost some windows. That is the least of ooh, of my concerns. A big oversteery moment is, uh, well, that's okay. We can live with that across the speed bumps we go. Now they're like, I say they're likely to be of lesser concern. Is that rear left or right? I think so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, okay, maybe not. Maybe the rear suspension isn't quite as happy with all of this. The difficulties for this car, well, it is a high powered uh, rear wheel drive vehicle, and while I have to drive the vehicles as hard as I can around here, well, this sort of vehicle is not exactly got a huge amount of, of grip. Um, so it'll be going well as quick as I can. As I can make it go. Uh, the big concerns, of course, are the well, are the front suspension. Uh, drive shaft could also uh, go. It will really depend on how much the chassis uh, bends up as we go around the place. That rear axle does not look sturdy. Hey, <laughs> gonna come back down. Oh, we lost our wing mirror. Oh no, it's the first, the first major casualty of the oh, of the run. That's hurt it feels like it's hurting something at the front I'm not sure we've got uh, something definitely doesn't look right Ooh, on the car I'm not 100% sure we've got full complement of steering I think some suspension might be collapsed somewhere a little bit can't really worry too much about all of that we're just gonna go for it I mean, we can if we can make it across well, across the jump and then across the speed bumps, we will have beaten the <laughs> the coronet. If we can make it past the mud pit, we beat the modern Mustang. So, yeah, if we could have a uh, good a good jump through here, we should have the power. Of course, there is plenty of speed in this car if we can use it. We do have the power, the speed to make it onto the tabletop. We will. All oh, that rear is looking decided. All oh, the rears, I think. I think the rears collapsed. Oh yeah, the rear axle's gone. <laughs> so. Interestingly, we have no rear suspension, but I don't even think the axle is connected to anything. Now, we are still working. We have seen cars survive like this. The Regency was the most dramatic uh, example, but we have seen cars survive like this for a little while. The concern now is the drive shaft. Oh, that's a big, that's a very big jump. Uh, the concern now is the drive shaft. If we lose, or if we keep bending and twisting it, sort of the amount of flex going on there. If we bend it at the wrong angle, the drive shaft is just going to snap. And then, of course, rear wheel drive. We lose all drive, and that will be game over. But we have made a lap with the Ford, which is nice, which is good going. I'm actually very surprised it's the rear that's taken such a battering. As you can imagine, normally it's the front of the cars. The front of the cars are where the majority of the damage is done. It's what hits the ground first after the jumps. It's what hits the speed bumps first, normally at decent old pace. But in this, we've damaged the rear heavily. It's not gone as badly as the Regency's. If anything, it looks slightly better now. It looks like we've crashed it back into place. Like we can still see how much that's flapping around. That is not what you want your rear wheels to be doing. But it isn't completely and utterly catastrophic. I say yet? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. The rocks could be interesting. We've still got more than enough pace and we've got plenty of control. No, For a minute I thought we had some bent steering, but it's actually not really proving too bad. I mean, it's sounding crunchy through there, but it's not proving too bad. Oh, okay, now we're fine. Again, across the rocks. The concern with a rear moving, with the, the rear wheels, or the rear suspension, in trouble is that you're going to end up approaching, you know, important sections, wonky, uh, you, you really, oh, like this, for example. <sighs> I think we're still okay. I think we're still okay. That certainly has bent our steering. A very, very uh, good example, Ford. I just wish you hadn't done it there. Yeah, as the car gets more and more buckled, damaged, it becomes a lot harder to drive the car. Just simply in a straight line. The vehicle does not cooperate as much. And the worse it gets, the more damage is going to be done to the car. There are a lot of concrete barriers. There are a lot of walls around here. There are tree lines to uh, <laughs> explore that we don't want to. That we really, really don't want to. Here we go. Now, the jump. 
Uh, this is always going to be an interesting one. I've got to carry a lot of speed up here. But I've got to try and keep the car vaguely in a straight line, which we have done fairly well across all of that, although we might not hold it together for the speed bumps. We do. There we go. Perfect. Uh, I have got a kitten of good luck uh, sat on my lap. I have Zeke, who has decided I'm not clean enough and is currently trying to get you Zeke that's quite distracting. He's trying to clean my wrist. Uh <laughs> And we are across the next speed bars, but at least he's not flopped on the controller like Eve has done. That's a bonus, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it's not long until I start biting at the controller. We made another lap, somehow. We might be falling apart in this. It is actually holding up pretty, pretty well. Uh, we're going to clonk the ground there. We'll go for a spin. Oh, let's take it out the radiator on that particular jump. I guess there was a, only a matter of time until we would see the radiator eventually let go, although the rest like the rest of the car after that first lap I thought we were gonna have a lot more a lot more troubles with this. Oh I think it might have taken a little bit more damage at the front. Still mostly the problem is is the wheels bent and the suspension might be a little bit collapsed there. So we are now kinda of going a bit nose first on the front that front right corner. So we go up towards these with the front right kind of hanging down towards the speed bump. You're asking for trouble. You just do head tipped towards a big concrete barrier. We will still be able to keep going for a while with this uh, current rate of, well, current temperature. Oh, have I bent the other wheel the other way? No, it's fine. It's slightly buckled. It's it's not perfect. Now, through the... Oh, that's, that's still a big crunch. You've got to try and go to the... Oh, if you don't go sort of through an awkward spot in that rock so you just get rolled over. Uh, rolling's not always the worst thing that can happen to a car, but you want to try and avoid it, really. Now, towards the... Oh, that... Okay, that is problems now. We have got big problems. We have lost... We have lost one wheel. Uh, have we lost one wheel? No, it has actually... It's uh, the steering rack is certainly not... <laughs> For a second, I thought that was completely gone. We managed to pull it back. It just got bent out of shape. Oh, that's... Yeah, so the, the front wheels are not really connected very well anymore. We are going to potentially uh, visit bits of scenery. <laughs> there may well come a time where we... Oh, that front left's very broken now. <laughs> front left's gone. Front left's entire... It's still vaguely connected, but the wheel axle is not really where it should be. Uh-oh. This is bad news for the car now. Uh, come on, Ford. Keep going. You can make another lap at least. You can you can make another lap. Oh, we are basically now landing on the front left corner of the car. The wheel's entirely gone. Uh, this speed bump might be fun. This might be seriously damaging to the car. No, we actually just about got the wheel back out from underneath itself. Ooh, it doesn't turn. Surely this can't go. Surely this cannot go to the overheating. I mean, this is actually doing a remarkable job. It might be heading up towards a uh, top sort of three. It's not going to go. It's not going to last as long as the Maramar, of course. But we might see it go up towards the top three, possibly, if we can climb our way over these speed bumps. Uh, it's starting to get warm now. We might have another lap in the car at the very, very best, but that would be asking a lot of the Falcon. The advantage, I say the, the advantages it has now, it's so broken, I can't, I physically can't drive the car hard. There's not... <laughs> There's not the control in the vehicle to drive it hard. Bits of bodywork are still falling off of the car. Through the pothole we go. I've got not much in the way of control. Enough to get through these. Certainly not enough to get through them with any sort of speed. Oh. No, 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 no. The actual... Well, I mean, with that wheel, with that wheel there often not helping. The whole car's... Oh, it's actually now really struggling to put any power down. Body's so twisted, or the vehicle, the chassis is so twisted, the diff's only trying to spin one wheel. We've got it together, that's cost us precious distance. It's on its last legs, I feel now. That, I think that chassis damage must have got worse. I don't know whether the speed bumps that did it or something. It wasn't quite that bad. And it's got a working brake light, amazingly, here. Oh, can we get the wheel to pop out of there? No, we can't. Oh, Christ, can't even turn away from that. Bugger! <laughs> we clipped the... It wasn't even the actual... Well, we, it wasn't the main bit of the speed bumps. We clipped the end of the speed bumpers turning and there was nothing... There was nothing there to go. 
Technically, we go out from a drive shaft. <laughs> Mostly steering damage. The rear suspension was knackered. The front left wheel didn't work for a good portion of that. So, that's, I mean, that's an impressive run, I feel. That is a pretty damn impressive run from the car. All the things is that it was actually about to overheat as well, uh, judging by the temperature. Yeah, the engine lock. It would not have got much further anyway. Uh, <laughs> just a lack of steering and a... I mean, you can see how heavily damaged, how heavy the car is leaning to the side. Hit a speed bump. Bye-bye, drive shaft. So, our next vehicle is a much requested one. After the Pigeon went last time and died, well quite spectacularly died, I'll be honest, a lot of people wanted to see how the Dove would fare. This is essentially a four-wheeled Pigeon. It's based on a very similar chassis, of course, slight tweaks to allow for the extra wheel at the front. I do remember a very long time ago this mod was insanely strong, but how it's going to fare around here I am not sure, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure what changes have been done to it, I haven't played with it in a very, very long time, so we shall have, whoa, it's quite top heavy, it's very top heavy, in fact, okay, we're, <laughs> we're all, we're all good, we're fine through all of that, uh, rolling it shouldn't matter too much, the, again, ultimately, the, ooh, the concerns are, well, steering, drive shaft, radiator slash engine. I mean, at the end of the day, those are the things that are going to take the car out. I guess potentially it's very it's very rare on this series. We have seen it more on uh, different sorts of destruction circuits, but chassis bending can take cars out, but it is unlikely around here. This is more of a slow, gradual tear apart suspension rather than big hits that bow a chassis to the point where wheels don't touch the ground anymore. That's, I mean, it, I guess it could happen around here, but it's unlikely. You have to have a very, very weak chassis uh, <laughs> for that to be a thing that can happen. Well, we've had our first roll. I suspect it will be the first of many for the dove we've twisted around the back. Now, this is what actually ultimately killed the pigeon trying to get across the, these rocks. We would, did not have the speed to get across there nicely. However, all of the wheels are still pointing in the right direction. All of the suspension is still somehow in one piece. <laughs> We're gonna tell. Oh, the wheels actually not perfect. Oh, the wheels aren't round anymore. Certainly not. The, oh no, that, that that is I think genuinely a chunk out of the wheel. That would normally be more of a concern. It's certainly a chunk out of the hub. I don't know about the tire. <laughs> it's, it's driving okay. It's not like an awful flat spot. Well, no, it's not really. It's very hard to tell. Now we started to do this. It seems like there's not a lot of suspension movement and suspension movement all at once. It seems very. <laughs> Peculiar is the word I'm going to use to describe the way this thing deals with bumps. It kind of is flung around a bit like a toy. I mean, it's kind of okay in some ways. It's obviously not doing real damage to the suspension when it's doing that, which is good. Oh, that's about to go really badly wrong. Oh, that's a huge, huge crash. That's one of the more vicious rolls that we have seen. Oh, that car's very, very, very light. Uh... So used to vehicles being a pain to uh, pick up and pull over. This thing here is so light that, that it, uh, yeah, it gets flung around. Uh, how are we doing after that roll? Pretty well, actually, all things considered. Ooh. Nope, we're still good. I mean, the wheels do look wobbly as anything. However, it still, you know, all functions. It still drives the right way. The wheels still turn. It does look... Maybe like it's slightly lopsided. I'm not sure though on that. Ooh. <laughs> oh no, no, that's all good. I thought for a second one of the front wheels had got completely and utterly buckled. Uh, no, it's it's all fine. It looks very loose the front. None of the wheels really look like they're connected very well. I don't know how long it's going to be until we start having issues. But for now, as we go on to another lap, oh, are we going to go and play the bouncy, bouncy, bouncy game? Yep, we've got some big flat. <laughs> we have got some big flat spots going on now. Uh, I think the diff is actually starting to struggle in this car. We are starting to have issues. If it, at the moment, it's okay. If the chassis gets much more bent, we might not actually be able to put any power down. There's just a chirp from the brakes as we desperately try to slow it down. Ooh, it does not like the speed. It doesn't like the speed bumps, but it's not actually doing much. Like the suspension. All credit where credit is due. 
The suspension on this is holding up. Damn well, it is. Those are big, big hits. They are big and repeated hits as well on the vehicle. The radiator, that's fine. The actual suspension, not that the suspension is great that is there, but the suspension that is there is still working pretty damn well. But it, you know, it's as, as good as it was to start with, basically. And after a couple of laps around here, that's quite a tall order to be as good as it was to begin with. Even the off-road vehicles can get into, like, serious, serious off-road contenders can get into uh, trouble with... It's the rolling, really, that these guys get into trouble with. Of course, this isn't the... It hasn't got the massive ground clearance. Oh, through the gap we go. No snapping of the wheels. We're just going to go for a little bit of a roll. And a trip into a sand trap? That's fine. Yeah, we are actually still okay. Right, Dove, how much further do we... I say how much further. How far do we reckon the Dove can continue to trundle on? I think steering might still be a concern with this. Ooh, if we land awkwardly, are we going to actually bounce back onto our wheels? We are. You can see the damage is done to the tires on that. That's actually quite significant damage to the front the front right. The other, the, all the other wheels are a little bit pinged, but nothing terrible. I, <laughs> I don't know. While it's held up to the punishment so far, I don't know how much punishment it can take. This, the, I think the, the body is pretty bent now, where it's positioned on the frame, but the frame itself looks okay. Again, this is a four now. The fuel tank is also another thing that could potentially give us grief. Uh, the fuel tank is quite exposed at the back. I guess if we land heavily on the back of the vehicle, maybe we could see a punctured fuel tank. Uh, leads to some interesting things. It has led to some interesting things for various cars. And we are up and over there. Oh, this is about to be a very, very big roll again. <laughs> Doesn't really do landings very well. Oh, are we in trouble with that diff? Uh, we've still got enough drive. Again, the rules state that if we cannot go above 20 miles an hour, that'll be a vehicle counted out. This thing is still very clearly capable of getting above 20 miles an hour. That means no count outs for the Dove. Uh, but if the diff does get to the point where, oh, wow, we got pulled massively as we try to come off of that. Uh, the front wheels are still pointing the correct direction here. The front wheels are still pointing the correct... <laughs> even if it looks like a wreckmobile. It looks very much like a wreckmobile, and from time to time, there's little in the way of. Well, I say there's a lot of a lot of spinning of the wheel from dodgy diff. However, function-wise, still mostly okay. Still, still mostly okay. Although it does only take. We have seen this sometimes with cars. It takes one hit, one big hit at a at a wrong angle. Brakes look up very easily. I'm going to hazard a guess. Probably no ABS on this. I'm surprised that really the brakes are working at all anymore. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised any wheel is working. There's a chunk taken out of the door. We literally there is a rectangular chunk. What did we hit with that? Uh, Hit something hard. Oh, are we going to do the whole bucking and and toing and throwing from you? I suspect we probably are. Uh, good news is we haven't really had any. I feel we're going to just roll it going around corners. I wonder if the amount of damage has put pay to uh, to that. It does seem to wander every so often. I don't know whether that's potentially from a little bit of wheel spin or. Oh. Okay, we're going to go for another roll, but I'm still not massively concerned. I mean. Would be if I was inside the car. The, the seats are a little bit mangled. However, mechanically wise, again, driving wise, we are still good. I think we're starting to get a little bit of a bent wheel somewhere. I'm having oh, I'm having trouble getting it to go in a straight line. But <laughs> it's not stopping it. Oh, although well, something's stopping it. Something's having issues down here. Uh, now, we are stuck on the rocks. I am allowed to pull the car free if we get stuck down here. Uh, that, I think, seems like a, a diff-related issue. Uh, I'm trying to pull it uh, clear with... Uh, there we are. We are clear now. Uh, are we going to be able to climb up the hill? We will. It must have just been the angle of the terrain that, uh, that it was on that was causing the, causing the grief right there. Radiator still in one piece. I mean, it's not exactly the most powerful vehicle. This sort of this sort of car is good. 
around the starter circuits. It, there's, a, there's a speed, there's a point at which you want to be in terms of performance where you are fast enough to clear all the hazards or the main hazards and you are slow enough not to well, hit jumps at 60 or hit, you know, bumps at 60 or 70 miles an hour. And the the Pigeon has been pretty good at that in previous series. The Dove looks like it's doing a pretty good job here. I mean, it's helped by insanely strong wheels that are holding up uh, very well to the demands, the punishment that is, that is given out around here. It's another time we go across the, the big concrete jump. Oh, yeah, again, it's, it's very uncomfortable on the landing and it's continuing to oh shake the car about I don't know how on earth those front wheels are surviving that <laughs> that's, a, that's a very very chirpy wheel yeah I don't know how the front wheels are surviving it but the front wheels are doing a damn good job uh, have we got something twisted now yeah, it kind of crabs a little bit. It does like to ping us off over this direction, which is not really ideal. But we're gonna... Ooh! I mean, we got... Uh, <laughs> well, we got bounced and then flung into that. It's, it's not a problem, though. It's still just taking bodywork, mostly bodywork damage. Yeah, we have started that little bit of crabbing. It's got a long way to go if it's gonna go after the Marama. A very long way to go if it is to go after the Mirama and the sort of condition it's in. Nothing's really stopping it yet, but it doesn't. The Mirama was in considerably healthier condition, I feel, than, than this. This is crabbing weirdly, and I feel like it's only a couple of hits away before something very, very big snaps in it. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it does it. I, it. I guess maybe it's just like the camber and the toe of the wheels is just slightly misaligned. It's we've seen a lot. Of, in fact, I've seen visually um, considerably, whoa, considerably worse looking that actually doesn't handle so bad. Uh, this looks all right. I mean, the diff might not be helping it if it is spinning one wheel faster than the other. That's not going to help with handling. It's another big roll that has done little to hamper. The, the Dove's attempts, or I say attempts, the Dove's continual progress around here. Well, it's going to go, I'm pretty sure, into a second place. It is whether it can chase down that Miramar, whether it can outlive it, and if it can, how far can it keep going? How long will the Dove be able to keep going? Well, that's a tyre gone down. I guess that's the first real major damage that we have seen from... Oh, from this, uh, some hubcap came off, one of the rear wheels, I think. Uh, front left, I mean, front left tyre gone is not great, but it's hardly a uh, car-destroying fault. It will make turning a little bit difficult, and that wasn't great to begin with, but still... You know, we've got, we can still turn left, no problem. We can turn right, no problem. That's another big jump, but nothing important's broken. Okay, we're heading up towards the concrete jump. The back tabletop once again for the Dove as it continues to drag itself around the course. We are now struggling a bit more for speed with that tyre gone. We are nowhere near as quick as we had been. That's not great. Okay, so we have de the... the the tyre going down has certainly cost us some speed. Uh, the engine... Nope, the engine is still working. That's fine. Uh, right, this is... Ooh, this is looking... Quite unhappy. As we... Oh, there's another big crunch. Are the speed bumps going to cause us some grief? Mm. It's definitely now start. It's juddering a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's shaking itself. What has caused that? I don't know. Uh, the handling wasn't great to begin with. It's now got dramatically worse, and its ability to pick up speed has got dramatically worse. Again, it might help it. Oh, it won't help it if we do that too often. Oh, that's a lot of problems at the front of the car. Just seeing the the state of the damage 
that we have got going on at the front of the car. Yeah, so all of our front suspension has actually gone. So there is now, it wasn't great to begin with, there is now no front suspension. That's where all the juddering is coming from. Oh, Marama, you're gonna... I mean, it's, it's, it's the first serious, serious challenger looking car to that Marama, but it is now starting to really hurt. Amazingly, the radiator is still <laughs> alive in this. Amazingly, that's still going. I fear for it. It's the speed bumps that are now a big concern for this. What is it gonna oh, do across there? It's still okay? Hey! <laughs> it, it's pirouetting nicely. That chassis is in all sorts of interesting, interesting angles. But the rest, the rest of this lap is not doing enough to kill it. Like, the speed bumps are it's hitting them, but it's not doing enough to break the car. Like, down here, it's rough, it's bouncy. We've not seen a car killed on any of those bits. We should actually still have, still got enough steering. And we've now not got anywhere enough speed to be understeering our way out towards the uh, kind of speed bumps. So it will continue on. The rock pit, this could be a problem area, especially if we're going to go for a roll here. Uh, the door helping us to uh, land the correct way up. Oh, come on. Come on. Drag yourself through all of this. Get out of the mud. This could be an issue with the front of the car now being so low. If we can't kind of propel it above the rocks, we might have a problem. Try and get... Oh, we did somehow make it through there. That is the smoother line to take through all of that. Uh, I can't tell if that wheel was leaning over. Uh, it doesn't really matter. we still got functioning steering. It's another big, big hit for the car. Still not another wheel buckled or bent. Okay. We're heading up towards the 10 mile mark with the Dove. It still lives. It's still soldiering on around here. But, oh, are we going to see another tumble? No, we're not going to see another tumble. It's just about still on its wheels. Uh, that might see another tumble from there. And, hey! <laughs> Door's still doing a good job of uh, straightening the vehicle up. Probably won't have the speed. I don't know what, quite what sucked the speed out of the vehicle in all of this. It's going to have a little bit more rolling resistance from the front, but I don't know why it's suddenly got this much worse. Oh, we've not, not got any turning at all, pretty much. Maybe the chassis is so bent, but well, you can see actually how much the wheels are wobbling back there. Maybe it's all so bent that it is just not able to use any of its power. Oh, that's not what you want. There goes the radiator. Okay, <laughs> that's a face first into the floor. The dove is slowly, it took a while, it took quite a while. The dove is now slowly starting to destroy itself. Uh, what have we got on these? That's a big wheelie, it's going to be another falling over. Still, <laughs> still it lives, but it's only, it's just, it's clinging on, it's, everything's juddering, everything's shaking at the back of this car now. They've, no speed. I just can't get going. There's no, nothing that I can do with this. You can see that wheel is barely touching the floor. It is actually in danger of being counted out for the lack of... Uh, it has just cleared the 20 miles an hour. So we have got to the point now of a bent chassis pretty much stopping any power uh, going down. It's just about fast enough to be allowed to keep going. The issue it's going to have is that I'm having to now work the engine pretty damn hard to keep it going fast enough. It's going to overheat even quicker. Temperature's already creeping up here. Uh, so we're going to go for another big roll, somehow bouncing our way. <laughs> bouncing and twisting our way as I try and gather control of the vehicle up. It's, it's a wreck mobile, is this dove. It is completely and utterly destroyed as we come across oh, the rocks. No, not the rocks. Well, the speed bumps. Uh, are we... We might actually have got it wedged. It might be crash welded on that uh, on that barrier. Can I free the vehicle? Oh, I don't know. It might have actually got itself very, very stuck. Uh, it is pretty stuck on that. Uh, excuse me, car. Well, I mean, this gives it a little bit... I don't... <laughs> 
I don't think I can get you off there. There we go. Okay, the dove is free of the crash barrier of the thing. Everything's locked up at that fr <laughs> front left's gone. Oh, there we go. It's now started turning again. That's fine. I mean, even that wasn't enough. Even that wasn't enough to <laughs> stop the dove. The engine's going to eventually explode. Keep going, I can't actually remember, well, the distance indicator is only so good at letting you know how far the cars have gone because it's not 100% accurate by any, any state of the imagination. So I'm not actually sure if we've got, if we've got to the Maramar's distance or not, because I can't remember, it's been a while and I've not really been tracking the number of laps we've done with this. It's everything shaking now. Uh, can we get across the rock pit once more? I've basically got to be flat out, there's no other options for me if I'm going to keep it going with the struggles that we have in the car. Come on, come on, little dove. Can we even make it across? The engine is laboring now. Oh, it's bounced its way across. And it's off, I think, unless, can we? Oh. <laughs> I think that's in there, oh, there we go. <laughs> it was really weird, like I could turn it back on and it kind of, Maybe that was like the starter motor sounds? I don't know, it was trying to go. It was trying to go, it didn't though. And that, I mean, it put up an impressive performance. I mean, look at the state of it by the time we finished. <laughs> it did not want to die. It really, really did not want to die. However, it was damaged to the front, really. Some of the front sort of tyres, uh, chassis bending, losing the ability to put down the power and that led to a slow jump, punctured radiator and eventually the engine expiring but a damn impressive run for the Dove. On a two hour results table and the Dove gets bloody close however it does not beat the Miramar. I actually have the Miramar as uh, the wrong lap for a while but it was it would be lap six both of them. Uh, the <laughs> The Dove, they actually broke down on the very same section of track, but the Mirama rolled further, and that will continue to lead, and has led since the very first episode. The Ford Falcon still sets a pretty good distance. It will go into a seventh place, which is not bad at all for a big, fairly heavy uh, muscle car in the end, the drive shaft, although there was significant suspension and steering damage to that car. Uh, also, bear in mind, I've Done these positions based on where they actually finish on the track. The distance counter on beam is a little bit wonky. Uh, it tracks, I think it, it measures distance based on wheel rotations rather than actual physical distance, hence why there are some variations in that, but this is their actual finishing positions. So the Miramar will continue to continue to lead. That though is going to be it for this episode. As ever, I shall link all the mods used in the description so you can download them and have a go with them yourself. But uh, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, a uh, goodbye.